Hello and welcome to Wise Exotics. Today we'll be doing a spotlight on Nepenthes edwardsiana. Nepenthes edwardsiana is a well-known species within cultivation. There are two mountain ranges it's well known for and supposedly a third one recently discovered. Not much is known beyond that, but supposedly a third variant type was found. At this time though, we'll be discussing the Mount Kinabalu and Mount Tambiukon, which are the two well-known forms of Nepenthes edwardsiana. Before you is a Nepenthes edwardsiana from Mount Tambiukon. Now, this is a seed-grown specimen I've been growing for quite a few years. It's tolerable to 50s and even into the higher 80s. So long as I had a significant drop at night, it didn't have any issue or freak out. I've heard that they can be sensitive to repots. This one has not ever had an issue with repots, unlike some of my other species. Uh, typically, there's some differences between Kinabalu and Tembiukon. One big difference is coloration. More often than not, Kinabalu are typically yellow, orange, red. Tampa Yukon are typically orange, red, and kind of a burgundy, darker color to, that can even be more purplish tone. Now, talking about purplish tone, Edwardsiana macrophylla and Velosa can all get a sunburn, blushing color that's more, as you see here, purplish. Typically for Nepenthes, they would burn or get that blushing more pink, orange, red. So it's unique to say that it's something that Eddie's macros and even Velosa get that's really interesting to see. It doesn't mean it's variegated or anything like that. It just means it got a lot of strong, intense light. It doesn't hurt it. It doesn't harm it to my understanding. Some pings like the one below here even get that coloration themselves. So it's just a unique trait that the Eddie's macros and Velosas all share. Now, the fangs, teeth, or fins, as many people denote them on the parasome, are thought to be something that catches moisture within the air. Typically where they are on the mountain ranges, fog and clouds roll in and those wick can catch it and push it into the trap, is the thought. It's the current hypothesis that I understand how, why they have that. It is a natural evolutionary trait and I think it's quite interesting. Now, eddies can grow highland, but I've heard they can grow intermediate without a problem. Again, so long as you provide proper nutrients to them. I highly recommend if you're going to have an Edwardsian to have it in Akadama or Akadama canama. That rocky media type helps with root aeration and provides natural nutrients that the roots can pick up and feed the plant. Unlike most other carnivorous plants, Nepenthes can be root fertilized and feed off of the nutrients in their soil. So please keep that in mind. So if you have any questions, comments, or need help, or some ideas, whatever the case is with your own Edwardsianas or thinking about getting Edwardsianas, feel free to comment below. I or other people will reply and try to help out as needed. I find the SETI is pretty durable and very uh, viable to grow as a specimen. I've never had problems with it. It originally was a rescue. Uh, it was a single leaf, not in really good condition. After I got it, a small tiny leaf pushed out and a year-ish plus later, you see it grown into this vigorous specimen before you. I'm quite happy it's doing well. Um, I don't really see any problems or have any problems with it. Again, if you guys have questions, comments, whatever, please post them in under the video if you ever need help from me directly i'm usually available on my instagram wise exotic just give me a dm and i'm happy to you know reply or help you out or consult trevor out